We're, we're here this afternoon with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Pomerantz. Uh, uh, Jeff is an uh, assistant professor here in the School of Information and Library Science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Gary. Well, uh, let's start by, um, uh, tell us a little bit about the various roles you play here at SILS. Well, um, I, teach, uh, I teach the introductory undergraduate course, mm -hmm. which is um, both an introduction to the field of information and library science, as well as a bit of a sales pitch for the field as mm -hmm. well, trying to recruit undergrads to the major. I teach the graduate reference course, the introductory mm -hmm. reference course, um, training our students to be reference librarians, mm -hmm. and the digital libraries course, which mm -hmm. is largely what I wanted to talk about today. Mm -hmm. my, my research area is kind of at the intersection of reference and digital libraries. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm fortunate, I think, to be able to teach in the area where I'm doing much of my research as well. That's great. It must be fantastic for not only you, but also your students. Well, tell us a little bit about um, uh, digital libraries and, uh, the, uh, and the services associated with them. Well, um, by my research area, I would argue that probably the most important aspect of a library, digital library or physical library, is the services and the librarians in the library who are in a position to be providing these services. I, mean, I think most people not in this field uh, who think of libraries think of books and maybe magazines, but there's a, a lot more to the, li the physical library contain materials that you may not think of, maps and government documents and microfilm. Uh, but Again, the one thing that I think many people don't think of when they think of libraries is the librarians who are in a position to provide assistance to the folks who come in. Now, I think that there are certainly plenty of interesting problems that my colleagues address and, and quite intelligently uh, in collecting materials for the library and organization of these materials, but what I'm interested in myself is the, the service layer on top of all of that that is a value add. Um, the, the services that can be provided in response to user queries um, for problems that people might come in with disambiguating mm -hmm. difficult questions, for example, and these sorts of services are beginning to emerge as well in digital libraries. The first thing that most people think of, if they think of anything at all, when you think of a digital library, probably is digital materials as well. Um, and there are certainly digital libraries of documents and video and audio content. These are the things that I think most people are fairly familiar with. Uh, but what you're starting to see emerge in digital libraries is services as a value-added layer on top of those as well, utilizing human knowledge that attempt to harness human expertise, librarians and subject experts, uh, as a way of providing services to users who are at a physical remove from the collection, which is very much unlike what you get in a physical library where it's often face-to-face. So one of the controversial statements I sometimes make to my students is, in an ideal world, you wouldn't need librarians. You'd walk into a library, and you'd know exactly where everything is, and you'd know exactly how to use all of the materials there. And we will never get to that ideal world. No organizational system is that good. You can't possibly organize someplace so well that no matter who walks in, you'll know exactly where to find everything that you could possibly need. So you get this niche evolving for librarians whose job it is to provide that kind of assistance. In physical libraries, you have a history where, until the invention of the computer, all services were human provided. Right? You've got libraries going back arguably 2,500 years every service that could possibly be offered had to be provided by a human being. And libraries were 
early adopters of computing and networking technology. People don't often, I think, think of libraries as being early adopters, but they, they really were. Libraries, physical libraries, I mean, were providing question answering, reference type of, of assistance over networks in the mid-80s, a solid 10 years before corporations were offering this kind of assistance. And now, of course, you can go online and chat with chat with, you know, lands and help desk people, uh, but libraries were offering this kind of assistance a solid decade earlier. So libraries as early adopters of, of this kind of online assistance. What's interesting, of course, is that with digital libraries, you've got exactly the opposite history. Naturally, digital libraries are going to have a history of starting with automated services first. And you had a lot of these sorts of services in the early days of digital libraries, search tools, better methods for browsing, data visualization, the sorts of things that tools could be developed for fairly early on. And what you're seeing now, I think very interestingly, in the last few years, is the development of human services kind of layered on top of the sorts of things that digital libraries are, are providing as materials, harnessing human knowledge. So, again, my particular interest, my, my research area, is trying to find the appropriate balance of the human services and the automated services. What kinds of services can be automated and should be automated, given the kinds of materials, the kinds of environment, the kinds of users? and what types of services must be provided by a human being because it simply can't be automated or should be provided by a human being because humans are better at certain types of functions. Um, so librarians have very depth understanding and knowledge of the materials in their collections. Subject experts have very deep knowledge of their particular subject areas and harnessing that for the users of a library, whether it's a physical library or a digital library, is I think the most interesting problem in this particular field and will drive a lot of technology development in the future. And what I'm seeing is the merging of the physical and digital libraries to a certain extent. Um, you've got physical libraries who are starting to develop digital services and develop their own digital libraries. Um, in fact, here at UNC, we've got one of the oldest digital libraries that is an outgrowth of a physical library, the Documenting the American South Project, where you've got digitized versions of materials in the UNC Library System's collections as a digital project of a physical library, and physical libraries are offering other sorts of services that capitalize on digital libraries. Um, one that I started thinking about recently was uh, the new type of job in libraries, the data librarian. This is a job that barely existed five years ago, uh, where you've got a new position where someone's job, a librarian's job, is to work with researchers and scientists who are developing large sets of data and do the management of that data set for the scientists who may not be in a position to know about management of data and organization of data, but the librarian does know how to do that. That's what we are good at. So the development of an entirely new branch of the profession in response to the fact that many fields are now developing their own digital libraries or collections of digital materials. And it's a two-way street because you see digital libraries developing services that to a certain extent try to emulate the kinds of services that are offered in physical libraries. Um, Reader's Advisory is a good example. It's a, traditional physical library service. You go into a library and you ask, well, I really loved the Harry Potter novels and I've read them all and I can't wait for book seven to come out. You know, what else would I like to read? And the librarian would go back and forth.
work with you and give you some recommendations about books. Have you read, etc. Amazon's recommender system is an attempt to a certain extent to emulate that function. People who bought this book also liked these other things. It works yeah, reasonably well sometimes, not so well other times, but it's an attempt to perform more or less that same recommender function. So, like I said, what I what I am seeing is the merging of physical and digital libraries as physical libraries throw off digital collections and offer digital services and digital libraries work on providing services that more or less emulate the kinds of services that are offered in physical libraries. And like I say, I think that that's going to drive a huge amount of technology development in the, in the near term. Um, the, the, the issue of, of reference is really an interesting one in, in the digital library. Uh, there have been, uh, you, you were, I know, involved in the ASCA services very early on. Uh, we've had uh, sort of uh, phone in to your public library services, as you said, for you know, decades now. Uh, you can send email, you can do uh, a chat, I am. Um, uh, people are doing this in Second Life and other kinds of yeah. environments. I mean, where do you see that going? I mean, how does that sort of tie in with uh, these kinds of, uh, you know, traditional um, reference services uh, that, that librarians have performed? Well, something that's quite interesting is that um, the organizations that collect statistics about library use mm -hmm. have been finding for about 15 years now that the number of questions being asked at the reference <clears throat> desk in the library has been on the decline, but the number of questions being asked in the same libraries often online, by email, by chat, through all these other means, has been rapidly increasing. Um, so that seems to me to be the area for expansion. And every time a new communication technology comes out, Second Life is a great example, Facebook is another good example, where there is an environment where people are communicating in some way or other some adventurous librarians are going and providing some kind of research assistance there, question answering assistance. And I think that this is absolutely the right path for libraries to take. Um, perhaps some of these technologies will not take off. Perhaps one environment isn't a great environment for providing this kind of assistance and others are, but we won't know it until we try it out and see what kind of experiments succeed and fail. The alternative, I think, is to a certain extent to be scooped by others who will do exactly the same thing. I think Yahoo Answers is an interesting example of that, where you've got an environment, a hugely popular environment also, that you've got people asking and answering questions, but the people who are answering questions are not necessarily subject experts, they're not necessarily librarians. They might be, but you don't, as the questioner, have any way of knowing who is going to answer your question. Yahoo Answers has tried to build in this reputation mechanism of allowing the questioner to rate the best answer, but what the best answer is may not have anything to do with who did the answering. It's did it fulfill a particular need. And there's certainly a place for that, but there's also a place for getting questions answered, regardless of the medium, by people who really know the materials in a collection, can really provide that kind of depth, or really know the subject matter, our subject experts. So again, I think there's going to be a balance between amateur, for lack of a better word for it, amateur answering versus subject or subject generalist like librarian answering. Great. Well, um, um, how, how, how does this get uh, addressed in the digital library course? I mean, do you sort of uh, cover all of these different uh, topics uh, or are there some that uh, uh, are dependent on the students uh, or your own interests? I mean, what, how does that work? Well. Um, I would love to get more in depth in the digital library course on integration of reference type services like the ones I've just been talking about into that course, but 
there's an entire reference course in the curriculum. So, I mean, as much as it would be really gratifying to me to address that in a lot of depth, there's a lot of times when I have to simply point to other courses and say, if this is a topic that is interesting to you, you should take this other course with me or with any right. of my colleagues. Right. And that happens quite often, and I would assume happens in all of the courses around the curriculum, as it should. Um, what we are able to do, though, in the digital library course is think about the kinds of services that would be appropriate for the kind of digital libraries that we're building. And the major assignment in that class is to build a prototype digital library, something small scale, something you can do within a semester, and to have the students brainstorm a bit about given the kind of materials and given the kind of users who would probably make use of this content, what would be the appropriate types of services and think through a little bit how that might get implemented. But ramping up a service is very labor intensive. It's not something we do in the class, right. as much fun as that would certainly be. Right. Great, thank you. Thank you.